What's going on guys? This is Javier again and I'm your host for Boulder Media Radio uh, and we're live again. Um, so if you guys are tuning in, I'm in a different room. This is not my regular office. Uh, we have no internet in our house right now and so I had to go to the library. I had to be productive and, and make this happen and on top of that I couldn't use my camera. That I usually use on my phone. I'm using my eCam and then using my connection with my phone to actually film from here. So now we're filming it from my actual uh, camera from my, my laptop, which isn't the greatest, but the sound should be good uh, is, is what I'm planning on, I'm hoping. So this is another episode of Boulder Media Radio. I'm your host, Javier. And we've got a pretty cool topic for today uh, that we'll be talking about. This is kind of putting myself out there, if you will. Uh, and so what I want to do is I want to kind of talk about, you know, what uh, what some of my, my four greatest failures uh, have been and, you know, what I've gotten out of my four greatest failures and, and how I was able to, to actually, I guess you could almost say, um, turn it around and, and, and turn them into some successes, if you will. So uh, the purpose behind this is it's not so much about um, kind of, you know, putting myself out there and, 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 you know, saying like, you know, I failed and you can succeed too. It's not so much that. It's, it's more about showing you guys that when you put yourself out there as being vulnerable and letting people know that you too are struggling or you too go through struggles or you too, you see what I'm saying? Like when you do that sort of stuff, it puts you and makes you look more human. And that's important when it comes to uh, when, when it comes to like today's society, like where, you know, you post pictures of what you, you think you are, or, you know, what you wish you were on Facebook, you know, you might get in front of a car, like, look at my new car, and it's not your car, you know, so I think it's important that uh, in, in this society of uh, almost, uh, you know, uh, not, I'm not going to say lying, but fairy tailing stuff. It's it's one of those things that by putting yourself out there and showing people and exposing yourself on some of your failures and and then and and using it as a way of success and how you've turned it around, uh, it's a great way of of people learning more about yourself. And so, you know, a, a great example is we don't have internet. We haven't had internet since Sunday. Okay, I was working out and and my internet. Uh, kind of like was it was w really weird that day on Sunday and all of a sudden it was just gone I was just on regular um, the, the regular network and I was like what's going on so we contacted our internet company I'm not going to use their name I don't want to bash anyone uh, but we contacted our internet company and we basically uh, were told that they're so backed up that they won't be able to come to our house until August 14th uh, it's August 7th then we called them yesterday that's a week and as you know, I work from home and I need internet. So what do I do? You, you, you gotta be smart, you gotta be productive. Uh, I made my Sunday like the day for going um, and, and you know doing stuff I had to do around the house. Monday, I got some stuff done that had to be outside of the house, but then I came to the library and borrowed a room and started working for like four hours, just cranking away on work. What am I doing today? Same thing. And so there are gonna be so many failures in your life that if you don't if you don't find ways on how to turn these things around then what's going to happen is, is that it's going to swallow you up man and i think i've got some pretty i'm not going to say unique failures that no one's ever experienced but these have actually affected me uh, personally uh, has affected my business has affected my career has affected many things in my life that uh, people don't, just don't know and i think it's important that that this is you know that this is shared and that people understand it and so with that said, I'm going to go through my four greatest failures that I've experienced so far. Now, let me tell you something. I know it sounds crazy, but I look forward to failures. And I know it sounds like, you know, why would you do that? Because that's whenever I truly find out who I am inside. That's whenever I truly find out what I'm made out of. That's when I find out like what it takes to be a success. I don't want to go through life and say like, oh, that was easy. Don't get me wrong, it would be nice to go through some of those things, but it's just, it's not fathomable, okay? So one of my greatest failures that I had 
uh, was back in the day when I used to compete professionally in sports martial arts. So some of you guys may not know this, but I used to compete professionally in sports martial arts. I was actually pretty good. Um, I uh, ended up winning a world title, I think in either 2000 or 2001. That's how important it is to me now, okay? And um, it was in, in point fighting. I was traveling the NASCA circuit, and I was considered a, a top fighter at the time, you know? And uh, it was it was good. It was great. Uh, and, and so what happened though is is that you know in the process of me competing and all this stuff i had all these op- i had this opportunity to get sponsored by uh, one of the big teams one of the big sponsors on the sports circuit so some of the big teams like one of them was uh, team john paul mitchell jpm and like the hair product they uh, have still today uh, a sports karate team uh, that travels the nasca circuit mbl circuit uh, for sport karate, and they're very good. Uh, they have, they produce, you know, hands down, some of the best fighting and forms and weapons athletes in the world, hands down. Okay, and when I say produce, meaning like they wait till these people come up, you know, and they start winning, and then they offer them an opportunity to be sponsored. And so, what's cool about that is, is that they sponsor you. They you know, pay for some of your events, they pay for airfare, they pay for entry fee, and they give you opportunities to do uh, demonstrations or seminars where you can get make extra money. And that's all great. And that was one of my goals. It was one of my goals to be sponsored by a top team. I had this opportunity to get sponsored by a team called uh, Team Elite, and then they had to be changed to Team CJB. Uh, and so they were like probably like the number two team, if you will. I would say number one, number two, they were always battling it out with JPM. Uh, and so they uh, were the, the the team that were seeking me out. Um, their uh, their sponsor was Spencer Arlington, I believe, or Spen- Spencer. I forget his last name, but his name was Spencer. Anyways, um, I remember when I was training with my friends uh, in, in in Lakewood, Colorado, and uh, they brought out some of the teammates to kind of. Uh, do a seminar, but then also kind of check out my personalities and see how, you know, what kind of person I was because they wanted to have high character people. And I passed that test, if you will. But um, the final test was me um, was me competing at this big tournament called the Diamond Nationals. And this tournament was one of the biggest tournaments uh, in the country. You know, I'm not going to say in the world, but one of the biggest tournaments in the country. To win the Diamond Nationals is to win, like, the Super Bowl, if you will, you know. Uh, and that was, it was a prestigious tournament because it brought some of the best fighters and some of the best competitors in the country, in the world. Uh, and so I was, you know, I was training for that tournament. And that I knew that if I did well in that tournament, I probably would have earned a sponsorship to be on Team Elite, Team CJB. Well, I went in there. Uh, I, I felt good. I felt strong. I felt mentally there. And uh, first fight, I believe I, I forget who was I was competing as. I almost want to say it was Brian, his name was Brian Plemple, I believe. Um, I think that was my first and only fight. And so, anyways, um, I ended up losing that fight, and that devastated me. Uh, that fight was was I knew that I should have taken that division, and. It kind of, if you think of it, like if I, when I look back at all this stuff, I realized that at that tournament, me losing that tournament set an entire domino effect of things that happened in my life after. And I let it uh, take over. And so I would consider that as a huge failure. And, and the thing is, is that my goal was to get sponsored. My goal was to be picked up and continue to compete because it was tough for me to compete uh, and and use my own money. Not that I didn't want to invest my own money, but I was going to college full time. Okay, I was working part time. I had no money. I had to. I had rent. Uh, I had to you know work a lot, teach martial arts, and do some other stuff to pick up some extra shifts and some extra hours. You know, school was pretty demanding. I was at the time going to University of Colorado at Boulder, uh, so. I was doing a lot of things uh, that was, you know, that was keeping me preoccupied and, and I was trying to make time to train. And so what I was hoping was, is that the sponsorship would allow me to, you know, not have to allocate a lot of funds into competitions because I was spending anywhere from ten to $12,000 a year just to travel and compete around the country. 
And it was fine for me at the beginning. Eventually, as college got more demanding and life just basically became life, it uh, I realized that I needed to I needed to make some you know some some big decisions and choices and changes. And so this opportunity came up, and you know I failed. I didn't I didn't actually show up to the tournament. I showed up. I just didn't show up. And I remember the comment that came out from Brian. And and if he's listening to this, you know this is no bash on anyone, but it was something along the lines of I thought you were a lot better fighter than this, and it really affected me because I knew I was a lot better fighter than this. I knew that I was one of the top fighters in the country that I had an opportunity, all this stuff, and I lost it. That actually uh, tore me apart, uh, that tournament. The next year, I never really started competing again because I I basically just, um, life just kind of happened. I had college that was getting demanding, and I was in a state of depression uh, because what I realized is that there was a shift in my life. It was going from how much you know I was doing martial arts and tournaments to all the way to where I was having to put more time into college and work, okay, and no more time for for training. So that failure, uh, and and mind you, if you guys you know know my background, martial arts was a big part of my life. Like my goal was to open a martial arts studio and teach martial arts and and basically do you know do that forever that was my goal and so losing that tournament really set a domino effect to the point where like i remember my friend stephanie calling me at one point and saying she was concerned you know she's like you know i feel like there's been a lot of changes going on with yourself and i'm really concerned about you know what's going on with you and um it was valid it was it was a concern from a true friend uh remember that conversation and i was trying to hide it i was like "Ah, everything's fine just you know things are just different in my life right now well, it wasn't fine. Not everything was fine. And so I needed to make some changes. Uh, and so that is where I started to get into the party scene in college. I started to enjoy going out and drinking. Believe it or not, I actually never drank while I was competing the entire my entire career. And I was 21, 22 when this all kind of started kind of unfolding where I started enjoying just, you know, the college scene. And that was kind of it. Uh, so I didn't go to classes as much because, you know, I was like, ah, whatever. I uh, didn't have the same kind of interest that I, you know, usually do uh, when it came to my academics and stuff like that. And so what happened is, is that my grades started suffering in college. This kind of leads into the number two thing that is one of my greatest failures. So number one was me losing this big tournament that kind of started kind of domino affecting everything else in my life. Um, so number two for me was was getting kicked out of college, and so some people don't even know this, uh, and so I don't talk about it because it is not uh, it's not what defines who I am. Um, me getting kicked out of college was probably the best thing that ever happened to me because it really got my act together. Now let me explain something. Uh, I am not an academically intelligent person when it comes to like books and memorizing stuff and taking a test and all of things. I'm more intelligent in application. I understand how to process what's being taught in front of me. Uh, I, it's, it's, it, those things tend to be like kind of like my, my winning uh, ways of, of learning, if you will. And so with college, I had a hard time in struggling with bigger classrooms. I had a hard time struggling with my uh, just just what was going on in the college scene, you know, where there were parties and going out and doing this and doing that. And so to the point where I just, you know, would show up to classes periodically, I would even show up to classes and be like, oh, wow, we have a test today. I didn't know that. And I would take the test and I get like a D plus or whatever. And in my head, I'm thinking, man, had I actually uh, studied for this test, I could have gotten a, a C plus or a B minus or something that could have, you know, passed this test. And, you know, what I realized is that my, uh, my, you know, my uh, goals in college, my focus in college to get good grades and academics wasn't really there. I didn't really care. And so I basically uh, was getting to the point where I was getting uh, about, I was, I got onto what was called probation. I got put on probation because I was just below a 2.5 or something like that, or maybe a 2.0 GPA. It was like a 2.0 or 2.5 because they were like, you know, your grades are starting to suffer. You have a semester to make these changes. I got a letter from the dean. And I was like, oh, crap, I got I to gotta do something about this. Well, I um, didn't do anything about it. 
and I basically continued my stuff and I was like, ah, whatever. And then my, my GPA fell below 2.0. It was like 1.75, 1.6. It was something bad. It was horrible. Okay. Nothing to be proud of by any means. And so with that said, I got kicked out. I got a letter from the dean uh, saying that, you know, you no longer are uh, going to be taking regular classes at University of Colorado at Boulder at the Lee School of Business. And you need to, uh, if you want to get reinstated, you need to get your GPA back up. And these are what you can do. These are your options. Your option is go to summer school and go to night school. Okay. And so that was it. Those are my only options. Otherwise, I wasn't going to graduate from the University of Colorado at Boulder. And um, I was like, that was a reality check. That was one of those things was like, crap, I got to I, I got to finish this because I had to think, I think I had a year or a year and a half before I was just done with college. So I was really like on the brink of being done and here I am getting kicked out. Okay. So what do you do? Yeah, uh, you, you, you basically, I, I, what I did, I went to my sister, I started talking to her and, uh, I remember having these conversations and I'm like, so what do I do? And I uh, never told my parents about this. So if my parents find out about this for the first time via podcast and webcast, that would be hysterical. Uh, but I have a feeling I have told them a little bit about it. But the reason I never told them is because they didn't pay for college. And in my eyes, in my mind, I was like, well, if you're not paying for college, this is none of your business. This is this is my problem that I need to deal with. So for you guys out there that don't know, I paid for my college. Okay, I graduated with a ton of debt and I paid off every penny of my college education zero debt now from college anyways this was probably the best thing that ever happened to me because it got me to a point where i had to get start talking to my sister more and getting closer to her and and really having a, a relationship again and so she kind of gave me some ideas of things to do and and one of them was like you need to go to night school and you need to uh you know go to summer you know s- summer school and that's what i did so i enrolled in night school i rolled into summer classes and uh, started getting my grades back up. Uh, and so they had this forgiveness program at CU Boulder where you could take some grades and apply them towards like to like flip them. So like if you had like a D in this class and you retook the class again and you got a B minus, you can just basically substitute the grades. And, and so this forgiveness program was up to like, I think three classes or five classes or something like that. I don't remember. Anyways, that was, it was great for me because what that allowed me to do was, is to, is to really get my act together. The hysterical part is that I was taking some of these classes and people were like, man, you know this stuff really well. I'm like, this is the second time I've taken this class. So of course I know this stuff now. And, uh, I needed that opportunity to fail because I needed to see what I was really made out of, what kind of solutions I could take. Because here's the thing. You know, prior to this, my first failure that I consider one of my first failures was me losing this tournament, which kind of, you know, started this whole domino effect. And I just couldn't stop it. It just kept getting worse and kept getting worse to the point where I got kicked out of college and I needed to stop this thing. So, you know, let's fast forward a little bit. Uh, I ended up graduating from CU Boulder uh, with a business degree and an emphasis in entrepreneurship in 2004. Okay, I think my GPA was like 2.4 maybe, 2.3. And here's the funny thing. Your certificate, okay, for graduating, that does not tell anyone your GPA. Guess what? Your degree is just a degree stamped and approved by by the university. That's it. So I graduated. And um, it was a big part of my life. It was a it was a big accomplishment because I went through a lot. I struggled through a lot in my life, you know, through that because the one thing that I was truly, truly passionate about that I loved the most was taken away from me, and that was sports martial arts. That was competing in tournaments, uh, and that it killed me. It killed me because I didn't know how to operate with that. Okay, and so it, I needed to stop it, and I did by graduating from college. And I think what was great about that, it taught me a few things. As I told you, I ended up paying my own college education. My parents helped me a little bit here and there on some other stuff, but I paid every penny. I think when I, when I ended up graduating from college, I had about $30,000 in debt, which I paid all off. <clears throat> I was pretty like gung-ho on getting this thing paid off. Anyways, you know, what I'm getting to is, is that what it did teach me though is by getting kicked out is, is being resourceful, 
being proactive, finding a solution, and making sure you come out with the outcome that you deserve. Not complaining about, well, why, you know, woe is me, woe is this, and all this other stuff. I get kicked out to the point where I now made it a joke. I, uh, you know, at, at one point I was embarrassed to talk about it, but now it's a joke. You know, when I talk to people and I try to relate to people, I'm like, listen, man, I got kicked out of college. And when people hear that, they're like, you got kicked out of college. The the entrepreneur that has done this, 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 and this, this got kicked out of college. And I'm like, yeah, man. And so all of a sudden, the conversation whoo, is here. We're now eye to eye. And that makes a huge difference when it comes to connecting with people. So now all of a sudden, my struggles that I go through, they're not just so much that they're they're real, but they're relatable. Do you see what's going on? So. I consider that as a great asset because what it did for me is it, it made me a person that I could start relating to other people. I could actually have conversation with other people, not necessarily people that got kicked out of college, but it made me human, as weird as that sounds. Okay, so my next, my num- number three failure that I had um, that uh, I would say set me back pretty big and it hurt me was was a hiring decision and so i hope that this person i'm not going to use their name okay and if this person happens to, to, to hear this i'm sorry but it was a poor decision okay i doubt that this person is going to be listening to this because they're no longer in the industry anymore but if it happens it happens it is what it is you know so um i uh, basically made a poor hiring decision and part of it was my fault um and the other part was the employee's fault and so this was in the process of our lease ending in my business and basically uh, we're in my old location and we were in the process of moving to another one. So I, w- I was looking for something bigger. In the process of all that, one of my uh, clients, her kid was training in our studio, was uh, intrigued in teaching classes and was interested in, in taking it to the next step. So we eventually brought this person on as a, you know, as a program director, essentially, to be in charge of our fitness program. And well, um, she was in charge of, of recruiting and getting new clients into our business. You know? So basically what it boils down to is, is that I had certain expectations for this person, okay? And I probably should have laid out more of a guideline of exactly what I wanted this person to do, what my program director to do, like lay it out. I, I, I had one. I had a program director kind of like job description, but I didn't basically uh, delegate tasks. So how I operate as a business owner is that I don't um, always want to give you things to do. I want you to be proactive and figure it out. That's how I did it as an entrepreneur. And I learned that you can't do that with everybody, that some people, and when I say some, most people need task-oriented stuff and kind of go down that checklist, if you will, of things that they need to get done, okay? And that's fine. That's important, and that's, 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 you know, that's good. And I never really did that. You know, I, I gave this person, my program director at the time, you know, uh, you know, of things of what I wanted done in the business. And part of that was recruiting and getting new clients. And then, the, long story short, you know, the, I spent roughly fifty thousand dollars in paying this person salaries, bonuses, uh, training, and other things to getting this position. I'm not gonna say filled, but fulfilled, if you will. And so, you know, it was over the course of I think two years. I think I paid roughly that, and uh, it killed me, man. And I had certain expectations of what this person had to, to have done, and they didn't agree with it. They didn't uh, want to step up to the plate. And what I realized is that if I was going to rehire that position, I needed to I needed to delegate more tasks and be more specific on what my expectations were for this person. And I didn't do that. And that hurt me because down the road, as my business started growing, I did not want to hire another program director because the previous one killed me. It hurt us financially. It hurt us in so many different ways. And let me explain this. 
When this person decided to leave, I was in the worst position possible. We just recently signed a lease in June. This person left in September, didn't fulfill their full two weeks, gave me short notice, okay? Was teaching a bunch of my fitness classes, all right? Uh, and then from there, my son was born early in July. We just moved into our home up north to get closer to the studio in July. So we lived in the house for eight days. My son was born early, five weeks early. He was a preemie baby, okay? Uh, my wife had to, you know, basically take three months off. And then she ended up, you know, quitting her job because she was going to be stay at home. I just got into a new location. I had zero coaches that I can, you know, all lined up because that person was in charge of hiring all these people, all this stuff. It was all falling on my shoulders and it hurt. I was scared. I was scared. And it made me pay the price for future hirings. It made me realize that uh, I can't, I, I've got to be better at training what I want done. So what, what came from that is eventually I started training people to be what I wanted them to be and do. So if I wanted a program director, I needed to train that person a certain level, a certain way, and put expectations very clear, okay? And that was a good thing that happened to me. You know, losing the $50,000 plus dollars wasn't, all right? That killed a small business like myself, okay? Like, we literally almost went under. No one knows that, is that my company, because of that hire, we almost went under because we were spending money on her salary and she wasn't delivering, all right? We were struggling to pay the bills. I mean, there, there was a point where I was looking at our bank account and I was like, this has never gone this low. That's how bad it was, okay? Never has gone this low. And that's how bad we were struggling, all right? No one knew those stories and I didn't talk about this other than with my wife. Okay, because it's no one's business. It was it, it was scary. It was a scary moment. But I, as always, find ways to get through it, and found a way to get through this struggle. Uh, to the point where we started growing our business again. We started getting back on the you know getting back in front of people. Started getting new clients in the door. Uh, I started getting more involved in my fitness program. I started revolving all sorts of stuff and then my training was getting more on par what also helped me get there was coaching i ended up hiring great coaches to help me take my business to the next level and the whole purpose behind that was is that it allowed me to really leverage different parts of my business that i was really good at doing and also pull out some things that i needed to develop because i was struggling with so a fifty thousand dollar a hiring decision almost put me out like literally out no one knew that it sucked it was tough and the struggles were real but you got through it and it made me to where i am today i've been able to to grow my business to a certain number i sold it recently okay uh and i'm able to to do what i love to do next okay my fourth greatest failure, this is more of a personal thing, and I hope I don't get teary about this, is um, missing a big part of my kids' lives. And so that is tough because as an entrepreneur, as a small business owner, you have to put a lot of time and a lot of effort and a lot of money in something else. And... I haven't been able to spend the much the amount of time that I wish I could spend with my kids and my wife. And so the thing that I realized is that as my family started growing and as my business started growing, we were at a crossroad. It's basically what it boiled down to. And um, I, 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 you know, if you guys are listening and, and paying attention to what my life has been like over the past few months, is I haven't I, I didn't have the chance to to have dinner with my kids on a, on a daily basis throughout the week. Okay, it was very rare if I got home early to have dinner with them, put them to sleep, or anything like that. Never got to do that. All right, because why? I ran a martial arts studio and I was done by eight or nine o'clock. So I'd go home, I'd have dinner that was left over that was probably cold and had to get warmed up again. All right, uh, my kids were already asleep. My wife would come downstairs, and this is not a knock on Susan. This is this is nothing against her whatsoever. 
But, you know, she would try to have a conversation with me even though she's been wore out by the kids. And we would try to have a, a relationship, if you will. And it was just, it was tough. It was tough for everybody. It wasn't one of those things that people um, should be put in. Uh, and it, it was hard. It, and that happened for five years. Uh, and so, or almost five years, you know, because basically like there were moments where it was it wasn't too bad and and then it just started getting tougher and tougher and tougher i basically would only see my my kids for about one to two hours a day and that's it so like i'd see my son gabriel uh in the morning if i was lucky enough to take him to school i'd take him to school and then i wouldn't see him until the next day 24 hours later that's it and it sucked and that is not a sustainable life um i mean it is sustainable for some families not for me and that's something that i was not willing to do for my family so with that said, I, um, I decided to, to sell my business, but I feel like I missed out a big portion of my kid's life. And granted, it's like, you know, you're probably thinking, well, it's only between like one and five. Like, what could you have missed? I've missed some things. I missed some great story times. I missed some great moments at home. And those are, and, and I think what I realized is that I didn't want my legacy to be, you know, like, well, daddy only works. And I never see him only on Saturday and Sundays is when I see daddy. And that killed me. So when I decided to sell my, my business and, and go digital and work from home, uh, then that's, uh, and, and don't get me wrong, it's not like, you know, things are gravy right now because I'm still working on building my business and building my brand. But what I'm getting to is, is that I realized that I missed out a big portion of my kids' lives when all of a sudden my kids were like, hey, dad, can you buckle me into the seatbelt? Hey, dad, can you take me out of my car seat? And I'm like, you never want me to take you out of the car seat. You never want me to buckle you. Because it was always, they always wanted mom. And when they wanted, they were asking me to do more things with them, that's when it hit me. And that's whenever things got... Like I, was, I sat back and I was like, okay, I realized that working hard and, and, and it's important. Growing your business is important. Being successful in what you love doing is important. But there's something that trumps that, and it's your family. And so I'm not going to say that I failed my family because I was providing for them. We were doing fine, but I wasn't there. I was an absent dad. And so that was tough. And not a lot of people know that. Not a, not a lot of people know that story. And it's not that I don't want to share that story about, you know, you know, that particular failure. But what I want to say and I want to express to people is, is that, you know, you need to sit down and you need to prioritize what's important to your life. And for me, for myself, faith is number one. My family is number two. Okay. And then my business and everything else kind of goes right below that. But what I'm getting to is, is that you need to see things that are going on in your life and, and, and look at the failures that take place in your life and find ways to use those failures to turn them around. So what did I take this failure of you know being almost like an absent father slash husband? I basically you know decided to make this huge decision that was a part of my life. I've always wanted to run a martial arts studio for the longest time since I was at least 14 years old. Okay, I'm 37 years old today. All right, not today, today, but I'm 37 years old now. And I, you know, had to find and understand that it's okay for me to step away from what I've been passionate about for so many years. And that it's okay for me to start something new and try something different. And so what I'm getting to is, is this, is when you figure all these things out and what's important to your life and then you revolve things around it and you make the adjustments in your life, things are going to change. And so that's what's going to help your business. That's what's going to help you. And so when I started seeing that I no longer had the, the passion of just teaching martial arts, but I wanted to be working with businesses, I wanted to help people in a bigger platform, okay, like this. I mean, this is why we're doing Boulder Media Radio. This is why we're doing these shows now. It's because I want to help people. I want my brand to go out there and let people know that I, I, I know what the struggles are like. 
I am an entrepreneur and I was in the trenches just like you in a different way. But there's always another way of getting things that are better for your business. And so I guess what I'm getting to is is that um, what I did is I adjusted my priorities, you know, and are things tight? Totally. Because I made a career change. I made a complete different career change. But my passion has skyrocketed. And it's because I realized that I love helping businesses. I love coaching. I love working on marketing strategies. I love helping people do better in sales. I love just talking shop with business. But the only reason I'm able to do that is because of my struggles, is because of my failures. And honestly, I would say that I don't think I would be where I am today if it wasn't for me losing that tournament that I lost back in I think 2000, I think, or, or something like that, or 2001. I forget what tournament it was or what year it was. And it just really just snowballed everything down. I don't think I'd be where I am right now. So all these failures that I have, it shaped me to become who I am today. And it shaped me to become the person that I am today, the way that I run my business, all that stuff. And it's important that you as, you know, as an entrepreneur, as a small business owner, don't consider yourself small whenever someone says small business owner, okay? Look at yourself differently, but understand that all your failures are important, but they're not, and that it's not going to be the legacy that you leave behind. It's a matter of how you deal with those failures. It's what you do to change those things and how you're going to leverage those failures to make them a success. This is why I say that I look forward to failures, okay? Now, I'm not saying that I'm looking forward to like bankruptcy one day or, or something like that. But what I'm getting to is, is that these failures are going to help me become who I am. And so it's kind of like working out. Like you need armor on your body, okay? So you lift. You get stronger, okay? And when I say lift, I'm talking like lifting heavy weight, all right? I'm talking barbell movements. I'm talking kettlebell movements. I'm talking like lifting heavy and that's how you get armor on your body, okay? And the more you put your body through suffering, the stronger your body gets. And that's exactly what life is like, and that's exactly what an entrepreneurship is like, is, is going through these failures so that you can put more armor on your body, so that you can get through these wars, if you will. I'm not taking away from our soldiers, but our, our own wars, our own struggles that we have for our business. Does that make sense? So, like I said, you know, my four failures, I hope this is something you can relate to. Um, this show went a lot longer than what I totally anticipated, so my apologies on this, okay, because my goal is to make these about a half hour, give or take, and we're at 38 minutes almost. But I hope you guys can take this, uh, you know, these failures, and you guys can relate to them, and you guys can find a way to turn your failures around, okay? Look forward to them because you need armor to get through the next battle. You need armor to get through the next war. And the only way to develop that armor is to go through failures, okay? So looking forward to seeing how you guys do. I'd love to hear what you guys have failed in your life and what you've done to turn it around. So comment below or send me a message and give me a story of what some of your failures were and what you did to make that failure a success. Thanks a lot. Again, this is Javier with Boulder Media Radio. Look forward to hearing what you guys have to do for your life.